All right, I want to welcome everyone that's joining us now uh, in our service this morning, our Sunday morning service here at the Shepherd's House. Those that are watching by uh, television, call somebody. Tell them uh, what channel that you're watching this on. Uh, also, if you're listening by radio, uh, call someone and tell them uh, what channel that you're listening. Also, you can get uh, the entirety of the service uh, by going to www theshepherdshouse.net, or you can look up Jimmy Wilson Ministries on uh, Facebook, and uh, you can uh, also watch it there. Um, and if you're in this area, well, come out and be with us. We'd love to have you here at the Shepherd's House. We're right in the middle of nowhere. If you heard of rural America, here it is. Uh, the cow pasture on one side and uh, cow pasture behind us and uh, just right out in the middle of the sticks and up one hill and right down another and round the curve. You think that you have went to an amusement park just to get here. But anyway, come out and be with us. We'd love to have you come and be in service with us. All right, we're going to be reading some things. If you go with me back into the Old Testament, a story here in the book of Daniel uh, that uh, I think that everyone needs to set up and pay attention to and take heed uh, to and especially want to send a warning out to those that uh, are not ready to meet God, those that are living in sin, those that think that sin is fun and uh, thinks that you are having a great time and that this is not going to end. I'm going to read to you a story about someone uh, that was really fooled. Amen. Did you ever have anything that really fooled you that didn't turn out the way that you thought it was going to turn out at all and you really got surprised? And how many knows that we can learn a lot from other people? Uh, what not to do. If you see somebody else drive off and their car slides off into a ditch, you know not to do the same thing that they're doing. If you walk up and see in the wintertime somebody lay their hand on a stovepipe and hear them scream, catch their hand and see the little water blisters pop up all over their hand, you know that not to reach up there and get a hold of that stovepipe in the wintertime or whatever it might be. We learn from other people's mistakes, or some people does, and then there's other people that can have the greatest example in front of them, and it don't faze them a bit. They walk right on in the path of somebody else, amen, because they've got such a rebellious spirit and such an arrogant way of looking at things, amen, that they know and saw the example of others and still go right ahead and do the exact same thing that they saw a family member or somebody else done, amen, and knowing that it's going to cause them pain and problems. Not very smart, is it? Amen. But we see people repeating history pretty often. Daniel chapter number 5 in verse 1 says, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and the princes, his wives, his concubines, drank in them. And they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. Then the king cried aloud to bring the astrologers, the Chaldeans, 
and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this saying, write him, and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Turn my monitors up just a little bit, please. Then came all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, uh, nor make known uh, the king the interpretation thereof. Then was Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords was astounded. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, uh, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the musicians, astrologers, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou the Daniel, which are of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jewry? I have heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and the light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the, king, of the thing. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thou of, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a, a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty, and glory, and honor, and the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, languages, trembled, and feared before him, whom uh, he would, excuse me, whom he would he slew, and whom he would keep alive, and whom he would set up, and whom he would put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, Hast now humbled, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all these things, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, 
and they have brought the vessel of his house before thee, and thou in thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and his writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tickle you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tickle, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius the Midian took the kingdom, being about threescore and twenty years old. Oh, let's pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you once again this day, thanking you, Lord, for uh, the plan of salvation, thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to cry out to you, and, Lord, to, to become, uh, Father, the one of the children of the Most High God. Father, I pray today to anoint us and let your word go forth and accomplish the things uh, that you sent it forth to accomplish. Lord, I pray that every person, Lord, Father, that's here today, Lord, might pay attention to the reading of the Word today, and that all of us might examine ourselves. And Father, I pray for every person that's going to be watching by TV, listening by radio, or watching by live streaming from around the world. Father, I pray, dear God, that we might examine ourselves and look at the example uh, that happened to Nebuchadnezzar and now his son Belshazzar. Lord, I pray, God, that we might, uh, Father Lord, also, uh, Father Lord, take heed to your word now and Father that we might see before it's everlasting too late uh, the error of our ways uh, and let us cry out to you that we might be found uh, our Lord uh, being in your will and Lord that the name of Jesus uh, Lord might be praised in our hearts and in our lives uh, Father we know that the uh, deceitfulness of riches uh, and the deceitfulness of sin has blinded the eyes of the world, and Lord, it is fooled the eyes of many that even attends church and claims to be Christians. Father, I pray to God that you would help us to learn from our mistakes, and Lord, I pray, God, that you would cause us to see the need, Lord, to cry out to you before it's everlasting and eternally too late, Lord, and it's the mighty name of Jesus we humbly pray and ask all these things, amen. Looking back into the story in the Word of God of the man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar and how that Nebuchadnezzar did not have the fear of God in his life. And he took, amen, from the temple of the Lord, uh, the golden uh, vessels, uh, and, 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 he, and he took them, uh, and, and he kept them, uh, amen, and his son, Belshazzar, as he came along and inherited uh, his father's kingdom, uh, didn't learn anything. Anything, uh, amen, from the falling of Nebuchadnezzar, his dad. You would have thought uh, being raised in the kingdom with his father and saw his father struck down uh, by the hand of God to where he lost his mind uh, and he crawled around on his hands and knees, uh, amen, like a donkey. And they fed him the grass of the field like an oxen, uh, amen, and his fingers grew out, uh, amen, like uh, uh, eagle claws uh, and his hair 
hair grew out, uh, amen, like a wild man, uh, amen, and crawling around uh, in the dew of the grass, uh, amen, would run through his hair, amen, like a wild animal. And finally there was one day he came to himself uh, and realized, uh, amen, he was nothing uh, without God. Uh, and it was the God uh, that made this world, uh, amen, that it struck him down because he had no fear of God, because he did not uh, acknowledge the word of God uh, and the commandments of God, uh, amen, because uh, he gave no reference to God, uh, but he was all about him, uh, and he done what was right uh, in his own eyes, uh, and the hand of God uh, struck him down, uh, amen, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, amen, finally repented of his sins, uh, but he lost his kingdom, uh, he lost his life, uh, and then Belshazzar, his son, uh, came along, uh, and you would have thought, uh, amen, he would have learned, uh, amen, from the, from the failures of his dad uh, and his household uh, not to do the exact same thing. But Belshazzar, being lifted up within himself, uh, amen, he went out uh, and he got, uh, amen, the golden vessels uh, that he came from the house of the Lord, uh, and they began to pour wine in those vessels. Uh, they began to drink. Uh, they began to party. They began to do things, uh, amen, that was not right, uh, amen, and taking no reference, uh, amen, to the vessels of God, uh, amen, and then the hand of God uh, appeared upon the wall, uh, amen, and all he saw was a hand, uh, amen, God, uh, his whole body wasn't there, he just saw the finger of God, the hand of God, uh, right, many, many, Tikul, Euphorison, amen, telling him, amen, that his kingdom, amen, was going to be divided. He had been weighed in the balances, amen, and he had been found wanting, amen. In other words, amen, you haven't done right in my sight, amen. They tried to get all the Chaldeans, amen. They tried to get all of the astrologers. They tried to get all the soothsayers, everyone they could to come in and give the interpretation of what was written upon the wall. Amen. You would think, uh, amen, that uh, Belshazzar, when he saw the hand come upon the wall, he would have fell to his face uh, and cried out to the God that had made him. But oh no, he didn't cry out to God. He just continued right on. Sounds like America, don't it? Amen. Sounds like people that's got generational curses. Uh, amen. You done what your mom and dad done, and you're raising your children. Uh, amen. To do the exact same thing. Uh, amen. With no fear of God, with not turning around uh, and heading uh, in a different direction. Uh, amen. There's a lot of people that's got good intentions. Uh, amen. They really do mean well, uh, but they just hadn't learned. Uh, amen. That sin. Uh, amen. Is destroying your happiness. Uh, it's making you miserable. Uh, there's some people. People that are miserable, they're ill as a hornet. Amen. And they don't realize, amen, the very thing that's causing them to be ill is what the devil's doing to them. And the devil's doing what he's doing to them because he's, they're allowing the devil to do what he's doing to them. And they're miserable and they're mad at everybody else because they're unhappy. I had it. Boy, it's getting quiet in here this morning. I was telling, talking to somebody the other day, and they got real ill at me, and they snapped at me, but I was just telling them like it is. I said, I, you know what? I said, I hope the Lord comes back, burns all this mess up, amen, gets rid of all this stuff. If it wasn't for the lost and the backslidden, dying and going to hell, I wish he would come back tonight. Ooh, it made them mad. Hey, man, because they're not ready to meet God. Hey, man, they know they're not ready to meet God. And they didn't want to hear me say that. They said, well, what a way to look at things. I said, yep. That's the way that the whole church is looking at it. We're all ready to get out of here. Amen. We've not been drinking wine. Amen. In the golden vessels of God. We've not been dancing and partying. Amen. In the things of God. Amen. And, 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 and taking and abusing. Amen. The things of God like the world has. Amen. Like some people's done. Amen. The mercy of God. Amen. Has reached out to a lot of people. You'd be surprised. Amen. Of the people that I could tell you today where the Lord has spared their life. Amen. The God has saved them from cancer. And today they're living from themselves. Amen. Just like Belshazzar. Absolutely no fear of God. Amen. Whatsoever. Amen. Not paying the Lord back. Amen. For what he's done for them. Amen. How many 
remembers reading in the Word of God, amen, the story of the ten lepers, amen, and Jesus healed all ten of them, amen. One come back and said, thank you. Now, where's the other nine? They all went on, amen, about their business. They received what they can get from God, but they made no changes. They did not worship the Lord. They was not grateful, amen. Belshazzar should have learned from his father. Nebuchadnezzar, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want him to got down and crawled like a wild animal, amen, because of the sin that was in my life. But you'd be surprised, the people today, that the devil is taking them, amen, through living hell every day and every day they get up and go back and serve him again and the Lord's died, amen, on the cross to set us free from our sins. And they don't acknowledge that. They don't reference that. They just say, well, that's really good, but I sure do love what I'm doing. Amen. I had a pastor friend of mine tell me a story, and I've not went back and researched this. I'm just going by what he told me. Amen. He said that there was a, a saying that in, uh, like in Africa, they've got uh, monkeys that's over there uh, that uh, they were will hunt those monkeys for food and some of them will hunt the monkeys to kill to uh, sell those monkeys uh, and how they uh, capture those monkeys is uh, they find a knot in a log that's rotted out or a hole that's in a log and they'll drop a piece of fruit uh, amen down through that hole and that monkey will reach in there and get that fruit uh, and because he cannot turn it loose the fruit won't go through the hole uh, amen he's uh, caught right there because all he can focus on is what he's got in his hand. And then they come up the next morning with a club, uh, knock him in the head, uh, amen, and kill him, uh, amen, and take him and eat him. Uh, and the only reason why he got killed uh, is because he wouldn't turn loose of the stupid apple. Boy, it's got quiet in here this morning. There's a lot of people that are that away, amen, when it comes to sin. There's a lot of people that are that away when it comes to drugs. Uh, amen, there's people who say, oh, I wish to goodness I never took any drugs. Uh, what are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to shoot up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to die. Well, why would you want to do that? I've got a plan. My plan is to lose everything I got, lose my family, lose my mind. If I keep using drugs two more years, amen, and I'll be comatose. I'm excited for what life's got for me. I plan on being in a nursing home when I'm 35. And I plan on the nurses coming out and saying, how are you today? All right. What's two plus two? What's two? I don't know because I ain't got no brain left. I burned it all out, but I'm having a party. Give me another joint. Let me shoot up a little meth. It'll probably kill me. I'm lost. I'm on the way to hell, and I've got one more time, amen, that I'm going to take a chance on burning in hell for an eternity, but it's so much fun, I can't take my hand off that apple. Because I want that apple so bad uh, that I can't turn loose of it. Uh, I want that apple so bad uh, uh, that, that uh, even if it kills me, uh, I'm going to hold on to it. Uh, here they come with a club. Uh, they're getting closer to me. They're getting closer to me. My heart's a beating. Uh, I'm getting nervous. Uh, I'm just about to die right here. They're going to kill me. But that apple, man, it's worth it. Uh, i got to keep trying to get that apple out of that hole, and it's not going to come. Amen, and that's the way that a lot of the world is, uh, amen, with sin. I wish some of you Christians would get in here and help me preach this morning and help me pray. Y'all ain't never heard the story of Nebuchadnezzar. I apologize. I ain't preached on this in six months or a year. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When we come to church, the law, so we pray, oh, God, touch the hearts of the sinners. Oh, Lord, let this go out and sit us. Amen. I done heard all about this. I know all this to know about God. Let the rest of them go to hell. That's the way that a lot of Christians are because they're not concerned. They got their hand on the apple. Praise God, I'll get the thing out. If my son goes to hell, he'll have to go to hell. But I got to get that apple out of that hole. I got to play in drugs. I got to play in sin. I've got to continue on. Amen. With the things of the world. I love Jesus. I love going to church. But I love getting out of church and don't have to come back and fool with it anymore for a week. 
Amen, because I can just world up all week long. Amen, I can have the fun of the world. Amen, I can feed the flesh and only go to church when I have to. But see, the spiritual man says, man, I can't wait to get back to the house of God. The spiritual man says, I wish to goodness there was five Sundays in every week and three Wednesday nights. Amen, every week so I can hear the word of God. And I love everybody. And I'm concerned about where the souls, amen, are going today. Amen. Here that Nebuchadnezzar, amen, was living a wicked life. Amen. He paid a terrible price. Belshazzar followed right along. Amen. And little uh, Junior fell right along in Daddy's footsteps. Man, I've seen it happen I don't know how many times. Amen. Grandpa's an alcoholic. The son's an alcoholic. The grandson's an alcoholic. Amen. He just keeps going on from one generation to another. Amen. They passed right by the cemetery. Amen. They buried their family. They walked right straight in. Boy, I know this is rough today. Amen. They walked right straight in. Amen. To the, church, to the funeral home. And they hear the preacher preach uh, that if this person's ready to meet God, you better be sure you're ready to meet God. Amen. But I got that apple in that hole, and I ain't getting rid of it. I like my drugs now. I love my alcohol. I love my pornography. I just can't hardly stand a moment. Amen. Without looking at some type of a dirty magazine, and I ain't giving that up. I've got that. I don't feel like I'm going to die. If I get a pressure in my chest tomorrow, I might go to an altar and pray. But today, I'm playing in sin. Today, Today, I'm living it up. Today, I'm having fun. Today, I'm not going to change. Amen, because I'm having too much fun. Amen, the title of the message today is The Party's Over. Amen, here, uh, looking in the Word of God, we see that Belshazzar thought, uh, man, we're going to have us a party. We're going to party like we've never partied. Uh, amen, America just loves parties today. And I'm not talking about birthday parties, even though they like it too. My grandchildren love birthday parties. Man, it's just like a Christmas. Amen. Uh, four or five times a week. Amen. Uh, some of my grandchildren's got all these cousins, uh, and, and 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 you know they'll go to twenty birthday parties a month. Hey, Amen. I don't know how in the world they afford it. You better get them something that costs a dollar, cause they're key. Amen. Just party, party, party. That's all the world's got on their mind. Let's go have a party. Let's go and party. Amen. I wish the goodness in America would get it on their mind. Let's go to work. Let's be responsible. Let's pay our bills. Let's treat everybody like we ought to. And it'll be easier for everybody. But no, it's not like that. I mean, everybody wants to party. They can't wait to get to work on uh, Friday just so they can get to the end of the week. Amen. And they think all day long, I'm going to party. I'm going to have me a time. Man, when I get off this evening, I'd go to the liquor store. And praise God, I don't have to go to Bowling Green anymore. I can just go right down the street here in Glasgow and get me something to drink. And I'm going to lay out and be stupid the rest of the night. <laughs> Amen. And tomorrow morning, I can't wait to get up. I'm going to hug that commode, stick my head in it, and throw my guts up. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to have a busting headache. It's going to feel like that an 18-wheeler is done run over my head. And every time my heart beats, the top of my head comes off. I can't wait to Saturday morning. Praise God. I'm going to have fun Friday evening. Now, does that make any sense to you? It don't make no sense to me either, but there's some people, uh, amen, they think that the busting headache, uh, sick at your stomach, uh, amen, is worth a few minutes of a buzz, uh, amen, that you get off of alcohol. I wish to goodness, uh, amen, they would find out about being born again of the Spirit and power of God and let the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, give them their high. It don't cost any money. It won't give you a headache. Uh, you won't have to worry about sowing your wild oats uh, and praying for the crops to fail. Uh, amen, you'll be in your right mind. Uh, Amen, you'll know what you're doing. Amen, but Nebuchadnezzar, oh no, he didn't learn anything. Belshazzar watched his daddy lose his kingdom. He watched his daddy crawl like a wild animal on his belly. Amen, it didn't phase him a bit. Amen, right now today, amen, there's people, their mama smoked, their daddy smoked, they both died with lung cancer, and they got a cigarette in each corner of their mouth. Amen, knowing, amen, what they're fixed to do, amen, in just a short time. And then when they're struck down with lung cancer, they'll say, I wish I'd have never started. 
God. Amen. I wish I had neither, but thank God I quit. Amen. You can quit too. Well, Brother Jimmy, I tried, and I can't quit. You ain't tried hard enough. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't you call my God a liar. Amen. He's the truth. Amen. You can do all things. Amen. Through God that strengthens you. Christ that strengthens you. Amen. We can do those things. Amen. But Belshazzar, amen, just continued to do the same crazy thing, the same crazy way. Amen. And didn't learn anything. Amen. Back in the 60s, it took prayer out of school. Amen. Back in the 60s, amen, or the late 60s and 70s, they started to take, or 80s or sometime in there, they started taking the flags out. I remember hearing, amen, scripture read over the intercom. I can remember taking the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag every morning before we started class. Amen. There was nothing to hear the principal get on the intercom and say, let's pray for somebody. Amen. And now then, amen, they don't want that because it's going to offend somebody. Amen. You saw America. Amen. Go down the tube. Amen. And listen, you get somebody to try to straighten America back out and they fight him in every direction. Amen. They whimper and they whine. Amen. Because we ain't got enough money that we're being paid for the job that we got. Or we don't have a job. Amen. And the ones that's whining because there's not enough jobs, you couldn't give them one. Amen. That's just a fact of the matter. Amen. Some says, I wish to goodness uh, that the suburbs uh, wasn't the way they was and our inner cities uh, is like Dodge City. The reason why, amen, the big cities is like Dodge City is because they took prayer out of school. Uh, amen. They took the punishment with a spanking paddle. Amen. Out of the schools. Uh, amen. And America's went down. Uh, and right now today, instead of trying to get that back, uh, amen, people are fighting even harder than they ever did before and complaining, amen, not having enough sense, uh, common sense, uh, and enough reasoning, uh, amen, to know, amen, why the things are the way that they are. Churches are froze over today. Lack of concern about seeing the lost saved. Uh, amen, it's come to the place it's my for and no more. If I'm not touching it or eating it, it don't affect me. If they're not kin to me, I'm just going to leave them alone. Amen. We get the spirit of Christ in us. Amen. The person in another country, amen, that's going through things, it's going to touch our heart. It's going to break our heart. Amen. You don't have to know that person or be kin to that person. Amen. We've got this cliquish stuff. Amen. They're in this clique and these over here is in another clique. Amen. And these like each other and these over here talks about them over there. It's almost like church work, ain't it? The Baptist putting down the Pentecostal. Pentecostal putting down the Presbyterian. Presbyterian don't like the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ don't like somebody else. And the truth about it, they don't know them like each other. And you get inside the same denomination, then you've got different, amen, associations, or you've got different, amen, cliques inside that same denomination. One of them anoints with all, and the other one don't. And they talk about each other. Man, all this fighting and carrying on. And we don't learn a thing. Amen, but watching the churches cool off. Amen, get quiet get dry shucks and there's no spirit in it and we complain about the churches amen not having the spirit in it but praise God you won't turn your television off and come to prayer meeting amen like you need to amen you won't get in there and read your Bible amen like it you need to amen we still just keep doing amen the same thing amen getting the same effects amen week after week month after month year after year amen and it's the same thing over and over and over again. Amen. What we need is to have the fear of God. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar messed up and Belshazzar looking right at everything that he did. It didn't affect him a bit. And finally the handwriting that came on the wall. Amen. He began to shake. His knees began to tremble as a man's hand appeared out of nowhere up on this high wall without a ladder and it began to write many Many tickle your forest, son. Amen. He couldn't figure out what was going on. Then they got all of the astrologers to come, and they didn't have a clue. Like, I don't know what that means. I don't know how he got up there. I got, I've done everything I know to do. I've done all my... Um, incense, and I've, <laughs> I've done all this, quoting all this stuff, and I've done all of these chants, and, and I, I've done everything I've been taught to do. I, I, I've called on the devil for help. I've looked into the stars, and I can't figure a thing out about it. Amen. His wife said, now just don't get upset. There's an old preacher boy down there by the name of Daniel. 
He's got favor with the gods, and she didn't realize, amen, there's only one God, and his name is Jehovah. Amen. Listen, he, amen, was in charge of everything. She said, go down there. Let's send for Daniel and let him come up here. He can interpret this. So he came, and then he said, I'll give you a, a gold chain to hang around your neck. He said, I will give you the third ruler, make you third ruler in my kingdom if you can interpret what's written up there on that wall. He said, you keep all your stuff. I don't need that stuff. But I'll tell you what he says. Amen. Through the power of God. And he told him what he says. And he gave him, amen, the definition. Amen. Telling him that your kingdom is, you've been weighed in the balances. You've been found wanting. And your kingdom's going to be divided and gave to the Medes and the Persians. Amen. Because, amen, of the sins of your father, you're doing the exact same thing. He did not care. He did not worry. Amen. About uh, 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 making God angry or displeasing God uh, or grieving the Holy Spirit. Uh, amen. Right now today, there's people that's got less, uh, amen, care about each other than I ever saw before. Most of the people, they don't give a hoot about somebody else. It's all about them. Well, Brother Jimmy, you done said that before. I'm going to say it two or three times. Uh, amen. If I need to, uh, amen, because it sure ain't getting through. Uh, amen. People don't have no respect for property. Amen. Because they don't want any property or they don't have any property. Amen. Most of them don't even understand the value of money. When I was a boy growing up, you didn't waste your food. They made you eat everything that's on the table. You don't want it, you don't take it out. We'll have enough left for supper off this meal if we don't waste this. Right now today, kids take a bite off a hamburger and sling it over the wall somewhere, and the parents don't say anything. Amen, it don't matter. Amen, there's no uh, discipline, there's no uh, uh, correction, there's no order at all. And, and I know I've shared this before, I'm going to share it again. When I was a boy growing up, we had supper and breakfast and dinner at a certain time. And I didn't eat when I wanted to. I ate when Mama set the table. And if I didn't eat when Mama set the table, praise God, in about six hours, I could have a chance to eat it again. Amen. If I could get patient and wait, amen, it caused me to check myself, amen, and find out whether or not, amen, I was going to eat, amen, or I could make it five hours. I remember going to my granddad's house one day, and um, I had some cousins from up in Indiana there, and uh, uh, my granddad hollered, uh, the last call for breakfast, last call. Come on, get your breakfast. Well, I come in and eat, and uh, another one or two, and the rest of the uh, of the his grandchildren, they's all piled up in the bed. And they just turn over. I ain't hungry right now. So about 9.30, they come in there and said, Granny, I'm starved to death. She said, we eat at 11 o'clock. Oh, I can't make it till 11 o'clock. And uh, my granddad said, oh, you'll make it. I called you for breakfast at 7.30. Oh, I wasn't ready to get up. And I said, well, you live till the next meal. We have uh, lunch at 11 o'clock, breakfast at 7.30, and at 6 tonight, you'll eat. If you miss it at 6, you'll have a chance at 7.30 again tomorrow. When you're at Pa's house, you eat with Pa, or you do a thou. We don't have. Your grandma's not going to cook three or four meals a day. And right now, we're at the place, uh, amen, to where we spoiled grandbabies. Uh, amen, we're frying bologna sandwiches. Some are at 1.30 in the afternoon, and and four and uh, whenever they want, uh, amen, whatever they want, and you go into Walmart, it's give me, give me, give me, and you load candy bars, uh, amen, and stuff, and some of the kids, uh, amen, weighs uh, 150 pounds at age four. If they want a candy bar or a chocolate cake, you just get it for them. Amen. Killing them. Amen. How many ever seen uh, the, the, them programs on TV about them people weigh six or 700 pounds? Do you see them? And most all of them's got a mama that says, well, I just can't. They just tell me they're hungry, and I just can't keep from taking them four hamburgers and six orders of fries and two chocolate cakes into them for them to eat. Ah! How much breakfast they eat? They eat two dozen eggs and two pounds of bacon <laughs> and, a, and two quarts of, of gravy. Why are you packing that stuff to them? Oh, I just can't tell them. No. Because I just love them so much. That ain't nothing but a lie. If you loved them, you say, well, we're going to cut this back until we get you to the place that you're able to get out there and work and help support you. And we're not going to tear the wall out and get the fire department from two counties to get you out and take you to the doctor. Whew. 
And that's the way that it is today. Amen. Because there's no understanding of real love. Amen. They go through one generation. Amen. To another generation. Amen. I heard this person several years ago, and I know I'll make a bunch of people mad over this. And I, if you need a check, amen, and you deserve one, I'm all for you having one. If you've got a disability, I gladly pay taxes to help support you. I don't have a problem whatsoever. But I sure do have a problem amen, with people teaching their children, if you'll play your cards just right, I think I could get you on disability too. Because you'll be 18 before long and you'll qualify. Let me tell you how to, how to do it. Uh, amen. And listen. Uh, amen. Some says, well, I got a nerve problem. You know why I'm scratching my head? Because I got a nerve problem. Oh, I got another nerve problem. Y'all think I ought to get a check? No, I don't think so. Amen. It ain't bad enough. I keep, <laughs> who ain't got a nerve problem? If you live in America, the government will make you nervous. <laughs> Amen. The politicians will scare you to death. Amen. A whole lot of people will depress you to death. They don't wonder. You got a nerve problem. Take a pill, the gospel. Get up and go on. Amen. It'll be all right. Amen. Some says, I got an eating disorder. Break your forks. Lock your forks up in a, in, a, in, a, in a safe, amen, and give a family member the combination if you're really worried about the thing, amen, lose weight, get up, go to work, amen. Some people think every time that your elbow bends, your mouth flies open. I'm going to hang that picture up, amen, because my mouth thinks I'm supposed to eat every time that elbow bends, amen, we got to have some discipline. Woo, I get to pull a surprise for this and there ain't no doubt. Amen, but see, Belshazzar done the same thing that his daddy done. Amen, he didn't learn a thing, amen, from the wrong that he did. Amen, there was no fear today. Amen, there's no fear, people, of therapy cars at, at, at the department store. They'll take a cart, they done with it, they'll let it roll, and if it hits that, uh, you know, that $20,000 Lincoln sitting down there, uh, the three... Uh, slots below them, they don't care. They're done with the cart, and that's their problem. That's what they pay insurance for. And then when they raise the insurance up, which is divided between all of us, in case you didn't know that, Amen. When they raise the insurance up because of a bunch of kooks, amen, that are out there, then you'll be mad. Amen. You'll be up, amen, picketing and walking the streets because your insurance is so high. Amen. You can't pay it in. If you would mind your business, amen, and do things like you ought to, amen, we could save a whole lot. Amen. Amen. I know from being in the business, I know sometimes somebody go in the bathroom and wash their hands and thank God that you do. But it don't take 64 paper towels to dry them. Amen. You're not supposed to put it in a toilet. And then people, some of them, I'm telling you what, it, it just blows my mind. How many knows what toilet paper is for? You know what that's for? I've seen people take fingers and see their fingerprints where they made streaks down the wall. I thought, why don't you use the toilet paper? Uh, baboons uses their hands. They ain't had no raising. Uh, amen. You know, they, somebody ain't real educated. Uh, amen. They ain't been taught very much to take human feces and write words on the wall. Duh. Amen. Only in America can we sit and watch our principles and our morals go down, complain about it, but you couldn't get them to go to an altar. You can't get them to change your life. You can't get them to get their hand off that apple or that piece of fruit that's in that log. Amen. That's all that they're thinking about. Amen. Is food, satisfaction for the flesh. Amen. I don't plan on making any changes. We've done this for years. Go by with it. You'd be surprised. Amen, what we can do if we really try, if we really want to. You've got to have the want to. You've got to have the desire. We've got to have the fear of God. Amen, a lot of churches has had to start locking their, uh, put up uh, fences and gates and uh, start locking them because of the heathens, uh, amen, that are out there, uh, uh, that, that goes in parties on a church property and, and things of that nature. It's a shame that that. that Today's society is the way that it is today. I didn't think I'd ever live to be old enough to see the day that you had to put a fence up in front of the church, uh, amen, to keep the heathens out, uh, amen, uh, even those that didn't know anything at all about God, and someone probably goes to church. 
Amen. Even those who didn't know anything at all about God uh, had enough respect for the house of God. They wouldn't thump out a cigarette butt uh, till they passed the church property. They wouldn't throw out an RC can till they uh, passed the church property. Uh, amen. They wouldn't do anything. Now then, they go on a church property. They bust uh, beer bottles. Uh, amen. Take their underwear off and throw it in the front in uh, a parking lot. Now, why in the world would you be taking your underwear off? They also got some used uh, birth control things that you find in parking lots sometimes, too. Well, Brother Jimmy, people surely ain't that crazy. Why, they are here in Kentucky. And they are right here in Barron County because I've got some of that stuff off ours. That's the reason why we're putting a fence up in the front. Amen. Why a lot of other churches is having to do it? Uh, amen. Because there's no fear of God. Uh, amen. There's no worry anymore. Oh, God will get them some of these days. But I'm tell you what, I've seen a whole bunch of hypocrites, uh, and the Lord can't throw me into hell and let them get by with it. You're right. You're both going until you get right with the Lord. Uh, amen. That's just the plain fact. Uh, amen. Of the matter. Amen. We need to be concerned. Uh, amen. About where. Amen. Our, our country's going. We need to be concerned. Uh, amen. About where our schools is going. We need to be concerned. Uh, amen. About what's uh, going on in the churches. And I, I shared this with somebody the other day. Someone told me. said, you know what? It's really not safe uh, uh, to let your children uh, go and be with anybody anymore. And I said, amen to that. Uh, amen. Uh, past the grandparents. Uh, you better not let them spend the night with anybody else. Cousins, uh, I mean, you don't know what they've uh, come in contact with in the school systems. Uh, you don't know, amen, what they've got a cousin, that their cousin's got a cousin that they pick some stuff up from. Amen. And you can't trust very many people anymore. Uh, there's, there's people says, well, I thought this one was okay because of this and because of that. Uh, amen. You better not trust anybody anymore. I tell you what, looks are deceiving. How many seen stories were uh, that maybe one of those sexual predators, uh, they would look like somebody that would teach Sunday school just to look at them. they clean cut and well dressed and a big old smile and always waving at everybody. You don't know they're warped in here. Amen. You don't know that they don't have any control. Uh, amen. Amen, that you don't know, amen, the thoughts that's going through their head, uh, amen, and the things that they're doing. Uh, and there's some people that's went so far, amen, they don't, uh, they don't went to the place uh, that they're out of control themselves. I heard someone in law enforcement tell one time, and I can't say where and I can't say who, but someone in law enforcement told one time, he said, you know, said we caught this man, he was a sexual predator, and he told what all it was that he was doing. I'm not going into that. But anyway, he said they, he worked at this business place and said it was he worked the night shift, second shift. And he said, when I went in and another officer with me and to get him, to arrest him, when he come out, he saw us. He said, well, he said, thank God it's over. He said, I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't quit what I was doing. He said, I'm sorry that I've done it. He said, but I'm glad it's over. See, what that man was doing was admitting that he was wrong, but he also said he had a problem that he just kept dealing with, uh, not dealing with it, just kept putting it off, holding on to the apple instead of going and getting help. Uh, amen. Not knowing, uh, amen, that, uh, that uh, the trouble was right ahead. Amen. It don't matter what you do. Sooner or later, they're going to catch you. That's all there is to it. You can rob 100 banks and number 101, they're going to get you. You can smoke a million dollars worth of dope, amen, and sell a hundred thousand dollars worth of it and get by. But sooner or later, Mr. Slick and Miss Slick is going to get caught, amen. Sooner or later, amen, the truth, amen, is going to come out. You'd be surprised of the police officers and preachers that's in jail for selling drugs. Oh, we got cold white in here at the end. Hey, man, the truth is the truth. Hey, man, because sometimes you don't know. Hey, man, did you know they got a bigger drug problem in some of the prisons than they do on the outside? <laughs> And they're locked up. Why? Because of the, of, of the guards being a, a dishonest and dirty and things. I've talked to prisoners myself. Uh, amen. They told me, you don't know what's going on in here. Amen. They said, I can get anything I want anytime I want it right in here just like I could out in the public. Amen. It's because of the system. Everybody, amen, wants to beat the system. Amen. They come up with this big idea, amen, not long ago. And, and it, you know, if we could just get America to realize the problem that we have is with sin. 
Instead of fighting the churches, making it hard on Christians, uh, we need to invite God back into America again, amen, to straighten this stuff out. But they keep coming up uh, with these bright ideas, uh, amen, rather, amen, than changing our ways, rather than repenting, rather than getting right with God, we'll come up with this new idea. So they got this chip now that they got in a credit card, in your debit card. It's going to stop all hacking, right? When you can get it to work, it's all right. Most time it don't. Amen. And I got one of them that's got a chip in it, and they hacked me this last week. Amen. Got me for over a hundred dollars. And 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 it was something from Apple where somebody had loaded down some downloaded some songs. $59 and something on one and $29.88 on another one and $14.99 and on another one. I uh, went to Apple iTunes. Uh, I hope they enjoyed the music. Uh, amen. But there's going to be the handwriting on the wall one day after a while. And it ain't going to be near as cute, uh, amen, as it is when they think that they're getting by with it. Uh, amen. Sin is fun. Uh, amen. For a season, Belchazer not only was partying, not only was Belchazer living it up, uh, amen, but he went too far. Amen. The Lord, uh, amen, was merciful and forgiving until he crossed the line. And he crossed the line <coughs> by getting the golden vessels uh, that had been taken out of the temple of the Lord. And he got those and began to drink and to party. Amen. But you know what? And when that hand appeared and the handwriting came upon the wall, the party was over. There's going to be a day coming when somebody draws their last breath. Amen. The party is going to be over. When somebody, amen, breathes their last breath, their heart beats their last heartbeat, amen, the party's going to be over. But until then, they think I'm going to live it up. I'm going to pretend it's not going to happen. I'm going to pretend that it's going to go away. Amen. Did you ever see anybody that fantasized over things? There's people just closes their eyes, and they fantasize over things, you know, being like this and things like that and whatever, but it don't happen. There's people that's waiting for Prince Charming till they got too old. <laughs> Amen. To even look at Prince Charming, he had to pack him in in a wheelchair. Amen. Because they're fantasizing, waiting for Prince Charming. There's some that says, man, when I get the woman that can cook, <laughs> that can clean, that'll take care of me, they'll just love me, let me just do whatever I want to when I get ready and just show up half the time. Hey, man, go out and hunt with the boys and whatever, I'm going to get married. And one day they wake up 80 year old and I'm still a bachelor. And I'm still fantasizing. I'm waiting for that princess to come walking through the door. Yeah, she'd be in a wheelchair on the stroller or something, some kind of walker or something if she can still get around. Amen. She'd be in diapers too. Y'all know we wear diapers twice in our life, don't you? <laughs> we wear them when we're young. We wear them when we're old. Now, don't laugh. It's coming. You just well get ready for it. Amen. Unless you die, amen, you're going to have to wear them. So don't look down on somebody. Don't look down on somebody. Amen. Got three lives, twice in diapers and one without them. I'm still without them right now, but I know my diaper days is on its way. Amen. Things is going to happen somewhere, amen, down the line, uh, somewhere in the future, uh, amen. And so, therefore, we just keep fantasizing. Uh, this perfect thing is going to happen, uh, and some of these things is going to change, uh, and one day I'm going to change. You'd be surprised at the people that goes on a diet between each meal. <laughs> Amen. And then uh, about once a day, they will award themselves because if they didn't eat the whole chocolate cake, uh, they'll eat a half of a pecan pie that evening. Amen. In between the two diets. Amen. That's in between the two meals. Uh, amen. That's the way that we do things. Uh, just keep fudging on stuff. Just keep pretending. Uh, amen. Everybody, and I'm going to quit. I've done meddling your business so much. People make these New Year's resolutions. All the time. I ain't made one in years. I ain't going to say I'm going to lose weight because I'm going to eat like a pig. Hey Amen. But I work hard and I stay busy. If I didn't work hard and stay busy, I'd be like this instead of like this. And this is bad enough. Hey Amen. But there's people that can't discipline themselves. They can't control themselves. Their life is out of control. 
They know that they're not doing like they need to, but they just keep pretending that it's not going to happen. Belshazzar, and that's one of the things that Daniel told Belshazzar, you watched your dad. You saw what he done, and you still persisted uh, on doing things your way without any fear of God, uh, not thinking that this is going to happen to you. And there's a lot of people today that thinks that the car wreck is going to happen to somebody else. The brain cancer is going to hit another one. The aneurysm is going to happen to somebody else. The next one in the funeral home, I'll try to go see. I'll buy flowers for them. But the next one could be you. The next one could be me. Amen. They live as if everybody else is going to the funeral home, but I'm going to pie patch it. I plan on living to be 790. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Today is a day of salvation. We lie to ourselves. We deceive ourselves. We just keep putting it off. I know what I'm doing is not right. I know what the things I'm doing is not correct. I know it don't please God. I'm going to change some of these days. I sure am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, preacher. I'm going to change, Brother Jimmy. I really am. Some of these days I'm going to change. You just wait and see. Yep. Mm -hmm. I hope you do. But will it be after you die, the only change is you died and left it? Are you going to change today? Or you've got an opportunity. I can tell you story after story after story where people put off, played, pretended that this is not going to happen to them until it was too late, too late to pray, too late to do anything about it. But today is the day of salvation. Won't you stand with me while they get us a song? We'll say goodbye to the live streaming folks and the television folks and radio folks. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in and being with us today. If you've got a need, feel free to give us a call.